Infrastructure underpins society. It allows us to thrive and prosper and protects us from both man-made and natural hazards. In the UK, over the next 100 years, we can expect our infrastructure to mature. Many of the challenges we face will be how we deal with this maturing infrastructure, how we decide the, the design interventions when we create new infrastructure, how we embrace digital technology to create cyber-physical infrastructure systems. To ensure that we can thrive within the carrying capacity of the planet, we need resilient, high-performing infrastructure, and infrastructure research is vital to this future. My research is all about water infrastructure. As a society, we tend to take water so for granted, so as a, a low embedded value. We rely on massive past overinvestment, and now we're trying to live off that to try and meet the huge pressures of climate change, of population growth, and particularly of the ageing infrastructure itself. So at Sheffield, our research really is focused on the distributed infrastructure. Other groups are strong on treatment works and things, but there's nowhere else that really focuses on the pipe networks, uh, the rivers that flow particularly through our urban environments. So we look across both the sort of quantity aspects, so areas of leakage detection, finding fixing leaks in the old infrastructure, but also its internal performance, how the, the biofilms, the chemical processes go on within the pipes. So we really take a very multidisciplinary approach to trying to understand how ageing infrastructure is performing and how we can extend that life and best use the infrastructure with, with minimal investment into the future. One of the exciting projects that the University of Sheffield is leading is the 2065 Research Consortium. It's six universities sponsored by the EPSRC looking at the future of water. So in 50 years, what will our water systems look like? We can't keep doing these unsustainable things that we're doing now, extracting large amounts of water from the environment. So we need some new technologies and we need some new paradigms for how water might work. So we have eight themes of really interesting research, everything from robots in the pipes to harvesting rainwater at a city scale. My research is connected with the energy performance of non-domestic buildings. Buildings count for about 40% of the nation's energy consumption. And for an individual building, 80% of that energy is used for space heating and cooling. And so it's critical both for carbon reduction and for ensuring good business productivity to make buildings work more efficiently. To address some of these challenges, I'm working with colleagues in civil engineering and architecture to develop novel control methods for non-domestic buildings. That will, for example, not waste energy by overheating spaces and also only heat spaces when absolutely needed. The electrical energy infrastructure in the UK is going to change quite dramatically over the next few decades. We have a number of ageing power stations that are going to be retired. We have the proliferation of renewable energy and the electrification of transport, so electric vehicles, electric trains, buses and trams. And essentially these are going to provide all sorts of opportunities but major challenges to the electrical en energy generation network. So at Sheffield we've set up the Centre for Electrical Energy Storage and Research Applications where we're trying to look at how to deploy electrical energy storage on the electricity network to alleviate some of the problems. A good example of this is the grid connected battery system located at Willenhall where we have a very large 2 megawatt battery and we're doing experimentation to see how batteries perform generating electricity and storing in electricity. The main challenges to the rail industry are uh, reducing cost, increasing capacity, reducing carbon and improving customer satisfaction. At the University of Sheffield we're particularly working on the design of overhead lines and the transition between ballasted track and bridges and other structures. The modelling work allows us to try the different designs and optimise them uh, for whole life cycle costs. I work in the Department of Computer Science and we manage and mine very large scale data for understanding traffic and mobility in general in very large cities. With increasing population, there is more and more pressure on roads. So what do we do? We, on the one hand, we monitor through sensors, through the Internet of Things, so every object becomes a sensor in itself or contains a sensor. But also we put the citizens at the center of the monitoring. So the citizens can provide 
either through their mobile phones or through sensors they have uh, the monitoring that we need. And therefore, we can have a complete picture of what the city is, how the infrastructure is used, how the infrastructure is behaving, any problem related, and therefore have a very detailed picture that at the moment we don't have. My area of research looks particularly at reducing the whole life carbon of the built environment. So to address this, my research specifically looks at improving the uh, material efficiency of the built environment. So that would be around how do we use less material to do the same job, um, or design for deconstruction material reuse. So we're very good at recycling, um, in the UK particularly, but we don't really reuse things. So how can I design a building more like a kind of kit apart, Meccano, so I can take that apart and say, okay, I've got these I-beams that I can now use in the future, and that's using a lot less um, energy and therefore greenhouse gas emissions to do that. So one of the biggest challenges for the UK infrastructure is reliability for our growing population. And in structural health monitoring, what we're trying to do is use sensors and, and data that we collect from everyday life to understand the performance and the status of, of structures. What we really want to do is understand problems when they occur and fix them as soon as we can. And that turns out to be a much more uh, cost efficient approach to maintenance and also a safer one. So one of the really exciting things about working at Sheffield in the Dynamics Research Group is, is this kind of ever evolving group and this excellent investment in, in new facilities for, for the research group. Uh, and a great example of this is our new laboratory for validation and verification. What we're trying to do with the LVV is be able to test structures in realistic uh, conditions, so there will be rain and, and wind and the ability to, to vibrate large structures. And what this allows us to do is to build a kind of increased confidence in our computer models, which essentially brings us robust and reliant structures for the future. <laughs>